mean, I appreciate that, but you know, my own thing with, with Deontay, with Deontay, ah, that's a part of, that's a part of boxing, I guess. But, yes. Um, here's a guy just, uh, <coughs> we'll see how long his career is done now, so I'm done, he's done. I'm done with him. This has been the perfect setup because I'm going to be honest with you as I, as I always, always am with people because I just feel that honesty is the best uh, answer for everything. Some people don't like honesty, um, others do. But, you know, this has been all setting up to the relationship uh, you've had with uh, Deontay Wilder and the accusations. And I was just, I don't really listen or go on other people's forums that much. Uh, I like to keep my own opinions to myself, my own thoughts to myself. But I was watching some some stuff yesterday and I'm I'm literally appalled at the, the treatment um, and the words that I'm hearing from American people with regards to you and uh, the whole so-called controversy surrounding uh, the Deontay Wilder fight. And I, I, I actually admire you for keeping your silence for so long, because if it was me, I would just be firing on all cylinders because that's how I'm built. But obviously you're an older man for myself and Spencer and, and uh, wisdom comes with age. And um, before we even touch on anything, before, before we even touch on anything, I'd just like to commend you on the fact that you've held your silence and you've held yourself like a true champion thus far. Oh, I mean, I appreciate that. But you know, my own thing with, with Deontay, with Deontay, ah, that's a part of that's a part of boxing, I guess. But, yes. Um, here's a guy just. Uh, <coughs> we'll see how well his career is done now. So I'm done. He's done. I'm done with him. Well, uh, I, I love it. Let's, let's, before we before we ask you some questions on that matter, Matt McKenzie. Uh, thank you for the donations again. He says, uh, the little fundamentals that Wilder does have, he hasn't been using in his last two fights, but more so relying on his power. What's up with that, Mark? Uh, what do you think about that, Mark? You know, uh, um, Mark McKenzie says that Deontay's been relying too much on his power in the last two fights and not really dealing with the fundamentals. What do you have to say about that? Well, one thing I, you know, I like to say is that you know, okay, he's he got a lot of power, that's all. And I wish him well, and that's it. Serious. Right. I, I only got his power. We'll see how far that takes him. Mm. That's, all, that's, all, that's all I want to say. Yes. Right, right. But one so, thing um, um, for you, sir, is I have to commend you just as what Tundi has said. It's like, what was it? Michelle Obama says, when they go low, we go high. And the mere fact that you've done that, then I've got props that. And not only that, because if that's me, and I know what America's like, I know there's going to be legal proceedings going on. We don't have to elaborate on that. But the mere fact that you've kept your class and your dignity to things that are ludicrous, right? So therefore, I can't... I've, I've said this way before. I said it last year um, when um, allegedly... There was meant to you were meant to be dismissed from from working, and then it came out later. People denied it, so they, it was me that first said that. Well, I, I've heard from people around that you're going to be dismissed from your role. I yes, graceful that it was because I'm not speaking ill of Jay Diaz, but I know Jay Diaz didn't go to Olympics. I know Jay Diaz didn't win a gold medal. I know Jay Diaz hasn't hasn't. Um, for the World Amateur Games Championships and one of them. I know Jay Diaz doesn't even turn pro. <laughs> Come so, on. This is what I'm trying to say. What I've noticed about how this game is, it's like when you're around something, these are my words and not my brilliance. When you're around something, especially when you're coming from uh, um, them them chips and uh, was it, were they uh, in Alabama grits? <laughs> <laughs> right. Where you're from, where you're from, when you're from those areas, 
and somebody was to amass the kind of wealth that Deontay Wilder has amassed, what happens is this, is that you get surrounded by yes men because guys don't want to go out and hustle for themselves, so they latch on to the next best thing. So this is my opinion. It's got nothing to do with my breathing. So what I'm saying for the thing over that, when you get that, well, I'm telling you, you know, because we're from the road, right? <laughs> Come on. When, when, you, when you get that, you're going to get a world in your whispering in your ear. So when everybody's whispering in your ear, certain people don't want to admit blame or to take blame on themselves. So <laughs> an excuse. Famously, famously, like when George Foreman lost to Ali October 1964 in Zaire. He made every excuse going. My shoes were too big. They were too tight. The gloves didn't fit right. <laughs> this is George Foreman. So he says, when you do this, but it's the manner of how you take defeat and how you come back. Hence why I have to commend you because when you lost your title against Marlon Stalin and then you had the, the, the debatable draw, in in the, in the rematch, how you brush yourself off, and then what's it now? 89, so that 32 years, 32 years ago, this month, you became a two-time world champion when you beat Song Shil uh, um, Lee uh, in, what was it? I swear it's like, it's really quick, 86 seconds, on the undercard of Lloyd Hannigan, Marlon Stalin. It's 32 years of time. That's the uh, Mr. Breeden, Mr. Breeden, uh, obviously I understand, you know, you know, you're a man of integrity and um and, and honor. And and you know, as I said, we'll have to salute this. But if we ask any questions that you're not comfortable with, just say, you know, uh you know, you just 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 deal with it the way you would deal with it. But you know, this is a live interactive show, and 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 you know, I I and Spencer wanted to highlight your career uh, before we really get down into the questions, which everybody wants to hear, and they want to hear you. And I feel that we're giving you this platform where, uh, and especially when the Americans seem, I, I just, some of the stuff I'm hearing um, from the American press and fans is 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 really out of this world. Um, what can you say about? Do you think there's going to be a, a, a Wilder v Fury free? Honestly, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, listen, Spence. If it messes up, no problem. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, but I mean, have you got anything to say against? these allegations of you spiking waters and stuff like that. Well, you know, because I, I, for me, I know even if you're, you you don't care about the map, it, it's still defamatory to your image. And, you know, I, the reason why we've given this platform is so that the people hear you. I, I want to hear you. I want to. I know you don't care about, because I'm the same. I wouldn't care about Wilder, but I would defend myself, you know, and I feel that I feel that you know you should defend yourself, you know, and what you feel about this man saying that he spat your war. I mean, I mean, so many people know me. My, my character speaks for itself. A lot of people know me. Yes. Spike your water. If you look at if you if, if you're looking at the tapes or whatever and stuff like that, you don't you'll never see the water in my hand, basically. You, you know, someone else will give me water. And regardless of that, I'm not, you know, I'm not there to I'm, I'm there to help you, man. You know, it's your And let the people know how long have you been working with Deontay Wilder? I have to is when you win, I win. Yes, yes. That's the bottom line. When you win, I win. And you know, listen, I mean, again, I'm saying uh, uh, easy, um, uh, uh, easy band says JD's had the water. You never had the water. JD's had the water. So, again, that's even ludicrous to say such a thing. Well, you, uh, you got people, I've seen some foolish people talk to me about, talk to me about that it's fight. It's four o'clock. Like, you know, come on now. You know, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, only foolish people come with stuff like that because it's crazy. Because you're not, 
Tell me, you know. So, so uh, tell me, um, um, how long was you working with uh, Deontay? Say that again, I'm sorry. How long have you been working with Deontay, or was you working with Deontay prior to the last fight? Uh, the last no, I didn't know. How many, no, but I, I mean, like, how many years? I was with him since he turned pro. Wow. And, wow. You know, and nothing happened except, you know, and that's the only thing that happened after that. Once, once, see, some people can't take a ball. Yes. yes. You do what you do. You know, it's a part. You know, so. Don't blame everybody. Look at me. Look at me. You know, go back and think about it yourself. Yes. Yes. And there was and a. There was a uh, let me pick up Rain71, who's made a donation of £15. Thank you very much, Rain. Really big appreciate up, big it. Up, big up, up Rain. Um, what do you think about um this whole situation with. um? Tyson Fury cheating with his gloves. Did you see that at any point? If he, if he did, I mean, which I, which I doubt it very much. I don't, I don't know. I, you know I've never seen that. But still, at the same time, he's not going to beat Tyson Fury. The dog. That's what I love to hear. That's what and, the fans love to hear. And, and, and you hear the J, JD's was standing right there when the man was in his hand, right? Now, if I put something in there, either Jay's blind or this is what I've been You know how strict it is in America, Ton. I've had fighters fight out there. You've had fighters fight out there. Yes. Right? And when your hands are being wrapped, right? Everybody's there. Everybody. Yeah, everybody's there. State commission's there. So you're saying the state commission was in with it as well? Are you saying that Jay Diaz, the guy who's really from the amateur days, he was in it as well? Because something like that, you can't. You can't hide that away from the guys. No. Right? Unless, unless you think the proper field. I mean, Jay, you know, Jay's right there when he gave his hand, right? You know, and he, couldn't, he didn't say nothing. No. I mean, I, I, and no. And let me tell you, like I said, to be honest, that's how much he knows about boxing. Hell, he tries to put a telephone in there. Come on, come on. Because, Mr. Breeden, I remember. <laughs> I remember um, I, I was in the corner with uh, Derek Chisora against Vitaly Klitschko in Germany. And they sent me to Vitaly's room to watch his hands being taped and wrapped. When Fury fought um, um, Deontay, who was the person that was sent to watch the wrapping of the hands? They did. Yeah. JD. Wow. Wow. So really, it's JD that's supposed to be getting the blame, not you. <laughs> that's the way I see it anyway. Spence? No, I'm like, I'm just saying, I don't want to, I don't want to fester too long on this, this love gate thing or yes. any allegation. The reason why is because me uh, or us focusing on that too long. We've got the sound bite Mark said. None of that foolishness that went around him. Uh, he never had no loot around him. That's enough. You don't need to talk no more. And the reason why you don't need to talk no more is because we're, we're diminishing the fact that we are speaking to a two-time world champion. We're speaking to a man that was an Olympic Games gold medalist. We're speaking to a man that was a world game gold medalist. We're speaking to a man that was a five, I say five times Golden Gloves champion. Yes. Yep. yes. Are we looking? Yes. Are we looking at guys in his in his spare room? Look, he's got all the things all laid out for us and all the rest of it. His gold medals up there um, to the right of him. I'm sure that's your gold medal, right? From from the days, right? Yeah. But right. Oh. My thing is, you know, I mean, like you said, in every fight is in the corner man to the other guys. I mean, you know, the guys in the corner to the other guys, just you know, watch him. I guess that's why they took Jay to watch his hand. That was it. That was you it. Did it. Your that was it. That was it. Hundred percent. Okay, well. So, all of your, um, all right, all of your from from working with um, Deontay Wilder was it a mutual agreement or did you just get a letter through the post? How did it go? 
What the train? What the train? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, we had talked about that years ago, and then I started working with him. Other than that, then you know things it was all things were okay until we got beat. Yes, yes. Um, can I just say, Mr. Breeden, you have tr a tremendous amount of support here in the UK. Um, so much people are backing you. So much people are with you. You know, um, G Chase said he just wants to big up Mr. Breland. He says that you are a certified brother. None of us believe a word of what Wilder accused or said about you, sir. Mm -hmm. And some, somebody's actually paid to say that, uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Breland. Yeah, big up G. Big up G. Big up G. So you know you're 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 very well respected over here, and you've got a lot of fans over here who are really disgusted with um, how you've been treated. But again, credit to you for the way you've dealt with this whole situation, sir. Uh, but again, I just want to reiterate what um, Spencer has said. We're not here to discuss the negatives, even though the the the, the fans, the boxing fans, they want to hear. You know, they want to hear the, 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 the nuts and guts, the bloods, the blood and what have you. But I think that as Spencer said, you've answered it. You know, you've yeah. asked the questions uh, honorably. So, so, so Spence, Ali, you know, that's, I've, that's what I've got to say. Yeah. That's what I want to say to Mark. Mark, Mark, where, where did you learn to throw your jab in the way that you threw, you threw your jab? Who taught you that? Say that again? Where did you learn how to throw your jab in the way that you threw your jab? Because your jab was like a right hand. Well, it was a combination, to be honest, a combination between Muhammad Ali and Tommy Hearn. Because that jab was good. I mean, yeah. because Tommy Hearn had a nice stiff jab, Muhammad Ali was stuck with a hard jab. Yeah. And the combination of that, I thought it both at the same time. Yeah, but not only that, but you thought the combination of trying to jab, but how you threw your uppercut, Ali didn't throw an uppercut like that, Tommy Hearns never threw an uppercut like that. How did you get to throw? Because for a tall guy, this is what I realized about you, which a lot of guys, which a lot of guys don't do, you would throw the jab right uppercut, you could throw that right uppercut when he was up close. For a tall guy, loads of guys can't throw inside work, but you had a very, very good inside game. Um, I mean, you know, I box a lot of short, I used to box a lot of short guys, and now I got to drop down and come up with the upper guy. It works pretty good. You can't hear you, Tom. Going back to another question with regards to. Um, uh, the Fury and AJ fight. Um, someone that says, he said, I said, Tundi and Spence, don't let Mark leave without telling us exactly how he thinks AJ and Fury goes. Uh, and if he really thinks Fury is as special as they say, or Wilder is just a man with no boxing fundamentals. Well, I, I can say, um, Mr. Breen has already said he doesn't think, um, uh, Deontay can win that fight. But how special is Tyson Fury, Mark, in your opinion? I mean, he's a, he, one thing, he's a very good boxer. But he's, he's good at mind games. You know, he, he's good at, you know, talking, talking, talk a good, he talk a good game. And yes. frustrate people or not. I mean, he can get you frustrated just by talking. If you're not yes. yes. Do you think that will work with uh, Anthony Joshua? And how do you see that fight going? To be honest, I could be there for Joshua. <laughs> so, repeat that again. See, please, one more time. <laughs> I could be there for Joshua. <laughs> is, is that what? So, Mr. Freedom, so you I'm, believe? I'm there. Speak something straight out. Here's a guy who doesn't have a jab. At all, and that when he fought Ruiz, I think the second fight, he took yes. like his jab. That wasn't a jab. He was just doing this. Now, to fight a guy like him, I would out. First of all, I would out jab him. I would out jab him. He couldn't. He. I don't think he'd be able to touch me. 
Mm. And I think the mm. last time I got up, I couldn't sleep. Because the jam, he yeah, has no jam. And the jam, you bring it back here and put you down. So you so don't, you feel, don't that, feel that um, power would necessarily play a role in this fight with AJ against Fury? No, Fury would beat him, Fury would beat him up. Oh, wow. Why do you think Fury, why do you think Fury would beat up? Um, and he, he, has, he has a good mind game. He play with these guys, he's playing with their head, and guys, they get mad or they just get frustrated. Or they want to get so frustrated to they're trying to they throw them off their game. Um, I'm just, I mean, I'm just talking from a, um, a fan's perspective and a trainer's perspective. One thing I've noticed about the Americans, Mark, and I'm not saying that you're contributing to this, but I do feel that the American boxing public do not give AJ the respect that he deserves. And I think that... I'm not, I'm not on that. I'm, not, I'm on my side. Yes. I'm a fighter. Yes, yes. And, how, you know, I watch boxing, I watch fighters. And from my eyes, from, from what I see, yes, I could be him. <laughs> I'm talking about well, now. Well, not today. Yes. But, but I could be him. Wow, wow. He has, uh, no, he has no, he's just, just straightforward. He, he's not hard to hit. When we hit him, he's not hard to hit. Mm. Don't you think that fight was maybe down to a bit of lack of complacency on AJ's part and the fact that they didn't really prepare for a shoot fighter. They were getting really to box um what's this drug street cheat's name? Um what's his name, Spence? The man who's, who's taking drugs all the time. What's his name? Um what's his name, Spence? Come on. Jamel Putty Bear. Jamel, yeah. And then the changing opponent at the last time, you know, okay. I remember what do you but think at, about that? But at the same time you know, when, when I'm training for a fight, if I'm training, if I'm training for, if I'm training to fight Mike Tyson, okay, I'm gonna get somebody in spar who fights pretty much basically like Mike Tyson. But but that's the point I'm making. That there was a change in opponent. Really, I think it was two weeks or something. So he didn't really have time to change. Uh, you know, at that point. It was oh, so, point so if you don't know boxing, don't box. <laughs> if, I, if I got a fighter, if, I, if I'm gonna fight somebody, yes, I watch, I watch all their tapes, and then they come out doing something totally different. Yes, okay, I have to change your picture. I'm okay, gonna okay. Who's got a question? I'm, I'm I'm gonna gonna eat, eat 20 no, 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 wait, before that, Spence, sorry, Matt McKenzie asks, is Mark. Who's your top five boxers today? No, of all time. Of all time. My former four. Muhammad Ali. Yes, one. Tommy Hearn. Three. Two. Ray Leonard. Four. And my friend of Benito. Come on. Five. <laughs> uh, moving Wait, forward. Can you tell people just how good Rufio Benitez was? Because a lot of people don't know just how good uh, Rufio Benitez was. And I was having an yeah. argument just the other day saying, like, how Rufio was. He was the best defensive fighter ever. Wow. Wow. If, wow. You, watch that, if you watch that fight with him with Tommy Hearns, Tommy Hearns couldn't him. Tommy Hearns hit him. And he got him on the ropes. And then to Tommy to a combination, I mean, he he slipped every punch from the ground and he hit Tommy like this. He walked away. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you don't you don't see fights like that no more, and you don't see defense. You don't see defense. The, only, the closest guy to his defense was Pernell. Wow. So, so we're not giving Floyd Mayweather no ratings. <laughs> you see that, Spence? Mark went like that. He went like that. No ratings for play. All right, I mean, Mr. Um, 
Go ahead. Say, say what you're going to say, bro. Don't get me wrong. You know, you know the shoulder roll and all that other stuff. The point in your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know why no one ever thought of that, to be honest with you. <laughs> well, you're putting it out there. By the fourth round, you need to be hanging. What kind was of like, like George Benham famously was the guy that that brought the shoulder roll up. And I know like George was working with um Lou Duva. Oh George Benham? Yeah, but I never ever saw George Benham in the world title fight working with you. There's another brother, I don't know an old, an older gentleman that used to work in your corner. But I never saw George Benham work with you. Did you ever do any work with George? No, I'm not um I'm just in the gym, but Georgie brings it. He was a, he was a great trainer. I mean, he's very slick. He's very slick. I mean, look what he did to Fennell. <laughs> yeah. Fennell were doing things up there because we came up in the amateurs together. Fennell were doing things I've never seen before. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and Drew better than him. Interesting. And, um, and, and, and one thing, the only thing with Fennell, he wouldn't follow me back. He would never follow me. I mean, come on. If I fought, if I had a, if I was fighting South Pole, we was in the amateurs together. You know, I got a guy inside himself, bro. I said, um, I want to see if you know, can, you know, if I can hit one. He said, well, when you, when you fight, you'll see. I said, I want to spar with you. I mean, you know, see if it happen. You're not going to hit me. I said, how do you know? He said, because I'm not going to get an energy. I'm not going to box. He would never box me. You know what? He said that in a, he said that in an interview. When, when Pella Whitaker moved up to fight Buddy McGurk, was that 92, I think, 93? When he moved up to fight Buddy McGurk, and Pernod Whitaker said, yeah, I want to fight the waterweights, but I will never fight Mark Breland. He punched too hard. <laughs> yeah, Pernod, I have my buddy, I have my buddy. Have my buddy. Have yeah, God bless you. Anyway, what's your guy's name? <coughs> um, Sticky, yeah? Sticky, yes. He says, big up, Breland. There is a fight that you hadn't fought in your career that you would have wanted to, to test your skills against. Maybe past or present. Who's the guy that you want to fight? Also, big up stamina for sell. Cream. <laughs> oh, well, you got stamina for cream now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well shiny. So yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. So Mark, um, is there a fight or past or present that you would wanted to have tested your skills against, but never had the opportunity to do so? Floyd. Floyd. <laughs> Fantasy fights, Floyd Mayweather against Mark Breland. So break down that fight for us, Mark. How would you have dealt with that fight? Ooh. A lot of jabs. A lot of punching to the shoulder. You know, and then, you know, you're doing this and you're turning. Oh, punching your shoulder. Punch your, I'm going to turn. I'm going to hit you in the back. I'm going to hit you with whatever you give me, I'm going to hit you. But I don't think, I mean, he's, he's a good fighter, but he, I mean, he's not that big of a puncher. Isn't that because he went up in weights, though, as a super featherweight and even a lightweight? He, he was quite devastating. I know definitely a super feather. But, you know, he went up against naturally bigger guys, and maybe that's when uh, he, he, he opted more for the boxing as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, taking these guys out. I mean... He's good. I mean, he's good at what he does. Okay. Yes. He's just a thing of where I would have liked to see. Well, I'll, the fight I would love to see was him with Pernell. Yes. Yes. Because yes. he, he would have beat Pernell. I don't believe it. Well, we heard of a, we heard of a story. Uh, Floyd said that when he was younger, he boxed Pernell, and he said he knew right then he was a superstar. Did, was you ever uh, witness to any of the, these spars that Floyd and Sweet Pea had? No, I thought they may. Uh, I heard something, but I'm not sure. Yes, yes. Spence, right. So we're looking at like on the. Oh, sorry. Who is that now? Michael. Michael Burford. Was it difficult for Wilder? Did he listen to you? Wait, Good question. Mark Burford. He said, was it difficult training Wilder and did he listen to you? 
The proof is in the fights. You look at the fights. If you look at any of my fights, amateur or pro, you'll see nothing like you. Nothing. Because he does what he wants to do. Okay. Uh, so he didn't listen to you. No, basically. Wow. Wow. So why? I mean, why? Why? Why, why keep that relationship going so long? You know, is it because just the love you had for this guy and you always wanted the best for him? I mean, yeah. it seems. You know, I, thought, I thought you know that you know he could do better than what he was. Than what he, than what he was. Oh, I, I have it. I have it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, First of all, if I box the guys he boxed, I'd beat them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is serious. It's serious. That's the bottom line. Thing. So, do you think that? So, do you think that Wilder's career was carefully matched? Because obviously, you didn't. You didn't do the matchmaking, right? Couldn't match nothing. Couldn't match nothing too carefully. Just like, I mean, that's, that's. But I mean, he he he, 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 he had some good wins against uh you know uh Luis Ortiz. I thought that was a good uh. Okay, uh, well, good you, said, you said he had some good wins? Yes. A good win. A good... <laughs> okay. So so do you agree with me that the Ortiz was a good just win? That, just that fight. That was it. Okay. 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 I'm going to correct you. I thought, I thought actually the first remains to Vern fight, I thought he boxed very well in that fight. I thought he kind of was listening to you in there. You had the elongating jab. I thought then he boxed. You can be Stefan. Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Breland, Lady yeah. Shan, and let me say, Lady Shan is a female. Uh, she's a boxing. She's 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 a boxing uh, journalist and also a, a a big musician in a, a thing we call Grand out here. She actually did a song, uh, you know. In your defense, you know, slating uh, Wilder and saying that you should never have sacked uh, Mark Breland. So Lady Shan is actually, tell her what. Tell her, she's actually, from another tell her what? Tell her, say, hey. tell her, yeah. You hear that, Lady Shan? The great Mark Breland is saying, great. But Lady Shan said, why did it take Wilder nine months to fire you if it was about throwing in the towel? And how does an AJ have a jab? Does Wilder have a jab? No. Oh, no. wow. Yeah. And he used the jab one time in that fight with Stefan. And that was it. You think, you know, his whole, his whole, his whole thing is, his motto is, you got to be perfect for 12 rounds. Yes. Because of that. Mm. So, so, so basically, that's why. And also, a, a, another question I wanted to ask you: Is it true that Deontay Wilder doesn't really hit the heavy bag and the speed bag and opts more for the traditional training of strength and conditioning? Is that true? That's not traditional. No, um, he hits the. No, he box. He never hit the he, bag. You don't hit the bag. You don't. You don't hit speed bags. Wow! 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 Yeah, Very what, interesting. What, what I'm trying to say, Mark, could it be like, even though um, first of all, he don't jump rope. He don't jump rope. He don't, don't, he don't hit them. Wow! Are you listening to that? The fight is right, listeners. Deontay Wilder does not hit a heavy bag. He does not hit the speed bags. He does S and C strength and condition. And uh, Mark, what do you think? I mean, what, what's your take on that? You know, with with all this new age training, do you think that it's one of the reasons why we we don't see the the craft and the art of boxing anymore? Well, no, you don't see that. I mean, you know, I mean, boxing has changed so much now to where you know it's pads and body, you know. <laughs> And then me and the bad man doing all the work. <laughs> I'm telling you, the bad man's doing this. 
Hoping no one, hoping, hoping you don't get it here. He's hoping you don't get it. He's hoping you don't get it. But you know, my thing is, you know, <laughs> you know if, you see, if you see some of these guys too bad, just crack up. Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. Could be. <laughs> yeah, Mark. Uh, listen, uh, Matt McKenzie, um, he said Mayweather uh, is the best defensive fighter of all time. Plus, AJ has a way better jab than Wilder. It's obvious you don't like them. Stop the madness, Mark. Uh, love from Brooklyn. <laughs> so this guy is saying that Floyd's the best defi defensive fighter of all time. What do okay. you think about that? I mean, that's his opinion. Everybody, his opinion, you know what an opinion is like, right? Yes, sir. Everybody got yes. it. Everybody but my, got it. But my thing is, Pernell would, not, Pernell would be Floyd. I don't care what nobody says. No. <laughs> hands down. Wow. 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 wow, interesting. So do you do you agree also that AJ has a better jab than Wilder? No. No? No. He don't have oh. to. So you cut out there, Mark. But you know, everybody got opinions, right? Yes, yes, yes. But I'm talking from experience. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, come on. Probably. No, but for, ah. for my thing is, you know, you got, you know, fighters like Pernell, you know, so, I mean, don't get me wrong, Floyd, Floyd, Floyd's an excellent fighter, but at, yes. the same time, but at the same time, if you look at boxing coming up, if I can pick who I want to pick, yeah, I'll be, I'll be undefeated too. If I can pick all my fights, if I can pick all my opponents, yeah, I'll be undefeated too. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, he had, he had to. <coughs> yes. We can do that. That's you know a very, very. You know how many champions there'll be if you can have picture fights? That's a, that's a very good point. That's a very good point. Oh, well, 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 regardless, regardless, we still can't take away Floyd Mayer's accomplishments um, being a multiple weight world champion. No, no, yes. no, 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 no. He's good at what he does. He's good at yeah. what he does. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you can pick your opponents, you're good at what you do. That's 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 a good point as well, Spence. That's a good point. When you could when you can pick your opponents, you know that that's a very good point. I'm not going to disagree with you, although, again, you know, the the, the numbers don't lie, and what Floyd has done is remarkable. It, it, it's incredible to be honest with you, and I think you have to give Floyd respect because he's taught fighters uh, the business of boxing outside of the ring. So He's don't you give them give them credit for that? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, Alan Skill says, Mark, you are an absolute legend. Love and support from the UK. Uh, we know you are a good and low man. You're a legend. Yes, sir. Don't be mad at me. No, I'm not mad at you. I, I love watching the fight. It was a great fight. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not mad at you at that time because I'm saying like, I know the Hunnigan did what he had to do right. when he beat Donald Curry and caused one of the biggest upsets in world boxing history. So I'm not. I'm not mad at you for beating him up because, like. I'm gonna lie. I really wanted you to smash Marlon Stalin in the in the rematch. I wanted to. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> yes, I, I did. I really wanted to smash him. Um, but it, not only that, but it was like I hated people that always moaned about ah, oh, this is always going wrong for me. I'm always gonna get wrong. Blah 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 blah. And it seemed like even though I, I've spoken to Marlon, I saw Marlon Stalin around that in Vegas. Yeah, I mean, pretty nice guy, but I mean, sorry, Starling, when I was at in Vegas, pretty nice guy, but 
I really liked um, um, you because I remember there was so much hype and I'm only a young man in 84. I'm 10 years old. So me getting a ring magazine and seeing you front page of ring magazine and no amateur fighter has ever done that to grace the cover of a ring magazine. I was saying that's, you got to be something special. I remember the movie that you're in, the Lords of, the, Lords of Discipline. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen that movie? That was filmed in England too. I know, at Pinewood Studios. Yeah. And that film, that film was before you even went to the Olympics. Yeah. This is how big the guy was, you know? <laughs> Uh, Mr. Breland, um, Rav86 says, where do you think Wilder's career goes now? And is he still in the top five? Also, would you consider chaining any of the current heavyweights? Yeah, if, so, question, if so, if so, if so. I don't want to talk about Evander no more. And I want to say thank you to... To Nick. Tunde, Tunde. Yes. And Spencer. Well, listen, we appreciate having you and sharing your time with us, Mr. Breland. It's been an absolute honor and a pleasure. Right. Lastly, if you had any if you had anything to say to any young fighter coming up uh, of encouragement, what would you say to him, Mark Breland, before you sign out? It's a nice trainer, someone who knows what they're doing. And work hard. Run. And work hard. Stay in the gym. Stay out of trouble. Mark Breland, it's been a total honor, my friend. Thank you so much for giving us this interview. Thank you so much for such a love. Um, I mean, big up to you. Uh, thank you. And thank you for that guest who gave me that comment. Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Yeah.